the word of God has to still be discussed because virgin I am scared <laughs> I am really scared you know something I just I just be like should I come here boy I sometimes brethren I am scared what I am seeing going on in the church today I am very scared unfortunately my my wife is still not well even though she's home she's not able to deal with the children as she used to so um this is why I'm here so late because right now my little child is here with me I decide lying down and I'll cushion because she's either crying and my wife is not able to deal with her, you know? But that is the situation. Let's say a quick word of prayer and get into this thing here. I am not saying that the church is in apostasy or not in apostasy. I am just laying out the facts. You, my friend, and the Holy Spirit, will to lead you and to know if the church is in apostasy or not. I am just laying out what I am seeing going on in the church. Right? And you come to your own conclusion. I am not here to bash nobody, to bash no church, to bash no conference. All I feel I'm going up reaching me. But at the same time, I just want to point out the facts. Okay, I'm available to our Lord. We thank you for yet another Sabbath day, Lord. And I thank you that I have the opportunity to praise and worship you on your holy Sabbath day, Lord Jesus. As we get into this discussion, Lord, I'm this thing to go the way you want it to go, to edify your church, edify your people, edify your movement, O Lord Jesus. Save us in your kingdom, O Lord. I have strength us for what is coming on to us, coming on, coming on at this time of in earth's history, O Lord Jesus. Help us to be strong. To withstand the wiles of the devil, oh Lord. To withstand those poisonous darts, oh Lord. Help us to get through it. To meet you in glory, oh Lord. Amen. We are so tonight. I said, let me just put something out there. I will normally come on here about 8 o'clock. But unfortunately, my wife is not well. And I'm unable to come on as early as before. Right, so the latest at the news coming out is that there is a pastor going about, and he's supposed to be somebody. That, <laughs> oh my gosh, he's supposed he's supposed to be in charge of religious liberty, right? And he is saying that Rome has changed. No, for the life of me, I can't understand how he could reach that situation in his mind, in his worldview, to say Rome has changed. That is, that is madness. Right? When the Bible tells you that the leopard, that, that spirit is like a leopard, and it will not change. Right? There is an article on Adventist Messenger, where the... Um, the Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty at General Conference. Any yeah, position the man have? A very, very big position, a very serious position. Right? Can you the up? Recently said in a video, right? That the Second Vatican Council brought changes <laughs> to the Catholic Church in 1965. What he's saying, he acknowledged that Rome used force during the Inquisition, but he also asserts that Rome, a document on religious liberty, bringing about a change to the Roman Catholic Church. Right? According to Diop, Seventh-day Adventists need to be educated. <laughs> So as not to slander the Roman Catholics, but instead acknowledge their contribution to religious liberty. This is what a director of public affairs and religious liberty in the general conference is seeing. So these learned men are going out there and making videos and end up on Adventist Messenger website and all different... Um, channels 
all different media channels are picking up this story youtube channels I'm, I'm talking about and they are talking about this guy saying that the leopard has changed its spots and i asked the question tonight is our church in apostasy because for the life of me i can't understand why these guys are it's talking like this. And this man is the religious liberty. Eh? The director of public affairs and religious liberty. So he's the director of religious liberty in the general conference. And he is saying that the Adventist church, the Catholic church, sorry, has the, um, changed. When done, when you read the great controversy you will re you will realize that the the, 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 the spirit of prophecy is saying that the catholic church has not changed it will never change the roman church is present as fair front to the world covering with apologies her record of horrible cruelties so she will apologize She's clothing herself in Christ like garments, but she is unchanged. That all will never change. Every principle of the papacy that exists in past ages exists today. The documents, the, um, the doctrines devised in the dark ages, 1798, 5 to 3 to 1798, are still here, are still held. Let none deceive themselves. Great controversy, page 571, paragraph 1. So this is what we are seeing here. Hey? And people are going about. I was, I was like so shocked when I read this, when I saw this guy saying that. Hey? In actuality, Rome hasn't changed any of its fundamental beliefs, core values, or objectives. The Vatican successfully recognized that fostering interfaith dialogue. Hi, Sandra, good evening. Eh? Rather than force would be more effective, a more effective way to attain global domination. But the ultimate objective of bringing the world together and revising its div divisions brought about by protestant by the protestant reformation has not changed therefore the so-called change by the up right the who is the the, the the religious liberty director in the conference the general conference as says that the vatican has experienced isn't actually a change because the end result remain the same in this context, the change is more about adjusting the means than the goal. In a sense, so diap, diap, or whatever your name is, is wrong. Completely, utterly wrong. During the Second Vatican Council, the changes were specifically because of the fundamental mission was not affected. A shift in methods doesn't imply a change in core values. Vatican II was a change in tactics, not in substance. Prophetically, Rome continues to be what God has declared her to be, a man of sin. The beast of Revelation, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and the kingdom of the Antichrist. So I don't know where our church is going by saying these things that the, the Roman Catholic Church has changed. The Roman Catholic Church has not changed a bit. Only let them get a chance and you will see what they will do with us down here. Only give them a chance, an opportunity, and you will see what they will do with us down here. The leopard do not change my friend, the leopard do not change at all. Right? Only you give them a chance and you will see for yourself. The papacy 
that protestants are now so ready to honor is the same that ruled the world in the days of the reformation is the same spirit is the same entity nothing has changed when men of god stood up the pearl eh, at the pearl of their lives to expose on iniquity she possessed the same pride and arrogance assuming that lorded over the kings and prince princes and claimed to and claim the prerogative of god her spirit is no less cruel and despotic now than when she crushed our human liberty and slew the saints of the mosai rome has not changed it will not change let us get that clear tonight my adventist brethren hey eh? rome will never change the bible tells you that the leopard don't change his spots the spirit of prophecy also tells you that right so all who look at the sea the roman catholic church change the roman catholic church will never ever never ever 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 change right the papacy is the papacy the man of sin is the man of sin there is nothing going to change that at all right So let us get that out of our minds. Now let's change our mindset. You understand? We are going to change our mindset. There are positives in the church. There are positives in the church. Right? But, however, there are positives in the church. But we ought not. Right? According to 1 Corinthians 10, 20, but I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, right? And not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils, right? And 1 Corinthians 10, 21 say, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord, the Lord's table, and the particles of the devil. You cannot. It can't work. You can't spew sweet and sour water at the same time. It can't work, my friends. So this foolishness that the up is talking, that we and the, 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 the um we and the, the Catholic Church have so much in common and all this foolishness is madness. We cannot associate ourselves with that. You understand? And there are so, so many things happening within the church. Right? If, 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 if you were to go to Revelation 13, right, you will see, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Right? And his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and his great authority. So if the dragon is Satan, and we see in the leopard, the Catholic Church is described as a leopard in Revelation 13. Um, um, Revelation 13, right? Then I saw that one of the head was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. These things, the Bible is so plain. History is lined up perfectly with the Bible, right? So how could you know as an Adventist person, as an Adventist administrator, as somebody who's in charge of, 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 um, of liberty, freedom to worship, that is, that is what he's in control of, eh? the director of public affairs and religious liberty of the general conference, that's his title. How could you state these things openly? Eh? And there are more, more things going on, more things are not going on within the church. And I'm so, so, so disappointed. Because I'm telling you in time past, I wrote extensively to very senior pastors in this, well, one senior pastor in this um, conference here, yeah, expressing these, these same kind of things I'm thinking, like, why are we going on this road? Why are we going on that road? Why aren't we seeing this? Why, we, why aren't we seeing that? And now it is coming to be here. It is coming to the forefront now why we are not seeing these things. Now we are seeing it. 
Now, I remember when I used to be studying um, the life of uh, Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, the reformer, right? He said that when he went to Rome, he thought so highly of that place, you know, when he got into the headquarters of the church. And you know what he wrote? He wrote that where the Vatican is, as a door, <laughs> the door to the pit of hell. <laughs> That is what Martin Luther wrote. Hey? What Ellen Wright and I had a similar kind of experience. Eh? When I started working up on the conference, you know, you, when you're young and you're naive and you know, you don't know everybody that's sin, you're thinking everybody in these high positions as be saints. But everybody's sinners, right? So when I end up getting a little end up there and thing, and I went up and I said to see certain things happening, I was like, oh my gosh. You feel you go like oh, that's not supposed to happen. That's not supposed to that shouldn't happen. That person shouldn't be doing this. Why 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 you took up that? That's not his. You shouldn't steal. You know? So you just kinda get your mind kinda blown. Right? So similarly, Ellen White says Satan chief work is at the headquarters of our feet. <laughs> so it's not no Ellen White telling us this. So for die up. Or Diap, whatever his name is, who is the 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 the, the head of public affairs and religious liberty <laughs> for him to be making these utterances. This this word here that 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 that, that um Ellen White wrote here has come to pass. Satan's chief work is at the headquarters of our faith. He spares no pain to corrupt men in responsible positions and to persuade them to be unfaithful to their um, several truths. He seeks by all means in his power to shake the conference of God's people in the voice of, of warning and reproof through which God designs to puff Purify, sorry, the church and prosper his cause. Hey? If the heart of the work becomes corrupt, the whole church in various branches, branches and interests scattered, ab scattered abroad over the face of the earth suffers in consequence. So this is why I am very concerned. I am very frightened. Because I sat in my vehicle driving one Sunday morning and I either be between I-95 and 91 where you get by the Scooby and then we get gospel in your bones. I like to listen to those programs if I'm out on a Sunday morning. And then sometimes a little later on you get Ethusian. And Ethusian made a statement that they are now teaching the pastors in our conference to disregard the changes message. And this same brother, this same diop guy, I listened to him this evening and felt more sick. This same diop guy, this same guy who is the Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty in the General Conference is saying that he don't preach the change in message no more. He has just preached Jesus. So if you do not preach the change as message, that means you have disregarded the spirit of prophecy. So which means Ellen White out the door. You see the kind of problems you see in the next place here? A lot of forces at work. A lot of forces at work. And these guys have taken their education and their education have turned them to fools. And the Bible warns you against that. Do not allow your education to turn you into a fool. Right? But a lot of them have you took the, used the education now to turn themselves into a fool. Right? Another thing 
like Ellen White wrote and what we are seeing happening and this through the same the same guy in charge of um, religious liberty it is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy so this is why I'm asking the question tonight is our church in apostasy are we backsliding as a church I'm very worried I'm very very concerned I may not be attending my home church currently because my wife is sick. Right? So I can't move about as I want. But every opportunity I get to come on this live here or on YouTube, I, I tonight I really want to go on three platforms simultaneously. But my camera here, for some reason, is not coming on at all. I do have the funds to get it fixed properly. So sometimes it come on and sometimes it don't. Sometimes you'll see a more a wider image and a sharper, more clearer image. And sometimes I just have to use the phone. And I said I tried to link the phone with the computer. I couldn't link them. So there's a lot of problems I had. So I just said let me just do a live on Facebook and I'll take the Facebook feed and put it on YouTube probably tomorrow. And I said, so I am very, very concerned in my spirit. What is happening with, within the Adventist church? Because when you look, look at the, the wider world and you see what is going on, every minute you go on Facebook, it's a murder. Every minute you go on Facebook, it's um, PDD. Every minute is some, some kind of foolishness. So right now, Satan is normalizing murders because he, we're getting six murders a day in, just in this country. Right? And the young people now, who look up to these celebrities and from a please, my friends, come out of the world. I'm begging all a please. Stay away from this worldly music. If you see, you notice what is going on there? From Rihanna, come all the way back to every last one of them involving orgies. And they have to do all kind of manner of evil with their bodies. Just to be able to get a contract to get this this record contract and sell the soul, and then you listen and enjoy this music, right? And then some of the gospel music, the content is not very nice. Some of it is mirroring what is going to look what is happening with um this guy um um Kurt Franklin. His music is mirroring the world, so we have to be very 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 careful. With our salvation at this at this stage, right? You have to come out of the world. Listen clean gospel music with simple beats and simple song. You see them song will mirror in the world. Who okay, gets having problems? It is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy. I have spoken many times. On my lives concerning ecumenism. For years, I spoke about ecumenism and the dangers of ecumenism. And now we are seeing whereby we are seeing where in our major hospitals and universities, these people are now attempting to have unity in these places as if. We and them is all these big set of friends. You understand? As if we and them is big, big, big friend. You know? They are attempting to come into our universities in a big way. They are attempting to come into our universities. I want to put up this flyer on the thing, but I ain't got anything that's in with the computer. Right? Listen to this. This is the flyer I'm reading off here, right? Loma Linda University. Right? Brought to you by Loma Linda University. That's our chief university, one of our chief universities in California, right? Right? Loma Linda University, Center for Understanding World Religions and Humanities Program. Adventism and cataclysm in a changing world can they learn from each other 
What can we learn from the Catholic Church? How to kill people who keep any commandments? What are we going to learn with these people? Yes, we can exchange them, teach them the correct thing, but no, them is Catholic, them is the boss. So them want to change us. Them the one we them the one we change them. They've already set in the ways. They will never change. The leopard will not change. You understand? And we are going there. I have seen a picture of the GC conference headquarters and the picture of um of of, of a room there. Hey? Eh? And these will have infiltrated all the churches. All, all, all. When you read um, Revelation 17, verse 1, it says, And it came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, let me show thee the judgment of the great whore, the prostitute. That set it upon many waters, waters as people and tongues and nations, with whom the kings of the world have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. Eh? And he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw the woman set upon a scarlet colored beast, full of name of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So that is here is clearly the Catholic Church. They don't want to change. They don't have no time to change. When you skip down to verse 5, it says, And upon her forehead was the name Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. The mother of harlots, that means she have daughters. All those other churches that keeping up Sunday with her are her daughters. And we have to understand that. All those other churches that are keeping up Sunday with her are her daughters and I will continue to pong that in the head but that's what the Bible say and I go with what the Bible say I ain't going with what no diop say whatever his name is right and the fly it says here the Seventh day Adventist and Roman Catholic Church have had turbulent relations through the years of course because we Saturday and only on Sunday we keep in God's Sabbath and only keep in Satan's Sabbath. But in today's world, what today's world have to do with anything? God changeth not. God is immutable. He's unchanging. unchanging. Not? But, but in today's world, many people see them as having much more in common than what separates them. What we have in common I mean, it has certain elements within the Adventist Church that is trying to make itself common with, with, with the Catholic Church because plenty of them want to be homosexual in the, in the Adventist Church and are coming to that. You feel afraid? Eh? That probably dies what they're talking about because Babylon, what we just read in Revelation 17, the mother of our, this, where all the abomination is, what, what, what um, the Bible describes abomination as, not homosexuality, what that church full of. Another homosexual and abuse of little boys and all kind of thing all over this place. Come on, man. The panel will explore the integration, the intriguing question of what two churches can learn, of what the two churches can learn from each other, and what might imply for the future. Right? Then there's some fella here named Bruce and Ma. Which is a uh, he's a um, he promotes ecumenism, right? George, George, well said, brother Marcus. The world is in the state of decay and collapse. No values, no care. Of course, right? A deception of human of human lives. That, that is what is happening there, right? So. There is one PhD fella here, and there's a the problem. It's your them PhD. All of them are PhD behind the name. So them feel because they're PhDs, they feel them as gods. You understand? This is what is happening to us in this church here. This is what is going on. Right? 
and 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 the spirit of prophecy tells you that once you see you 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 getting close to the papacy hey eh? it's because the church is backsliding right it is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy hey eh? i am sticking with that hey eh? i'm taking that tonight right eh? the protestants of the United States will be the foremost in stretching their hands across the Gulf to grasp the hands of spiritualism. Eh? They will reach over the abyss to clasp the hands with the Roman power and under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in the trampling of the religious of the rights and of conscience we will trample on the rights of conscience and this is why they have they are, they are, because he is the man in charge of our freedom of our conscience religious liberty jesus evening when i did my little study to bring in the sabbath i was looking at um um this guy Walter White and Walter White was interviewing an actor that acted in some movies and his career was about to take off and what he is saying is exactly what I just read in that, in that whole day spiritism he said every movie he go and he read the script and go to do the interview and to do the movie and discuss the movie with him is about somebody coming back from the dead it's basically concerning the state of the dead. Hey? Every movie. So he's realizing, because he said he was watching Walter White um, Total Onslaught series, right? And he said he stopped watching it. But he said when his acting career almost jumped off, he started to realize what he saw in that Total Onslaught um, video is in true in fact what Hollywood is pushing, the agenda Hollywood is pushing. And he was able to get a little eye salve and realize and catch himself in time, right? To realize that what they are pushing is spiritism on the minds of people. Getting you to be in an emotional state that someone is looking down from you from heaven that died last week. My friends, let me address it one time. If your friend or relative die. Today, they are asleep and pray that they are, they are asleep in Christ. If they are asleep in Christ, they will sleep until the resurrection. Right? They'll be caught up when the resurrection and they go to heaven. But they tell you that they are currently in heaven right now. Right? And a lot of pastors in these evangelical churches and so tell you that to comfort you when you're so sad and bereaved. In the funeral and say your husband your, your husband is not gonna have looking no one protecting you. Your husband is dead. The dead knows nothing. Okay? Even the mother of God is dead. Mary is dead. She knows nothing. She's in the grave. She was not resurrected. She wasn't translated. Okay? Right? So don't let nobody fool up on their head. Okay? Right? A lot of spiritism will come on this world. Right now they, they, they're telling us that the latest news is that. The James Webb tele telescope that is up in space. They say that the James Webb, Webb telescope have seen some armada of ships <laughs> coming to Earth and it is course correcting. And it will be here in 10 years and blah, 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 blah. Hey? So they're trying to say aliens coming. And there's a whole series. A TV show. And that's what I call predictive programming. A whole series of TV shows called Project Blue Book. That shows you in that TV show. That they are going to deceive the world. And to let the people believe aliens are coming. By projecting the image on the sky. And make you really believe. Let the whole, the whole, a whole panoramic view of the whole sky. And you will kill you dead aliens coming. And deceive the whole wide world. And Satan's whole plan 
It's a prolonged hour because he won't be nobody. Once aliens is real, evolution is real. Once aliens is real, okay? I'm not saying you don't have other beings, you know, but God will never allow them to come here. So if you read the Bible carefully, you'll realize that in the book of Job, it says that the sons of God came up in a little meeting in heaven. And and they asked Satan, where you come from? And he said, walking to and through up and down, up and down in the earth. So he was of a specific place. The other beings that was there from different planets. You understand? So God is a God is a big, 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 big God. So you can't tell me God or other unfallen worlds out there. But God will set it in such a manner that they could never traverse time and space to reach here. You understand? Because they'll be corrupted and then they fall. You understand? So Satan now will bring alien beings here. Use spiritual something. Make make you jumunu and so on. Make you he back at her. He wake up, baby. Come, come on, come here. Let's run down here tonight. Yeah, she'll get some tea just now. You want some tea tea? Then you don't make your tea already, you know? That's good. Right, you go back and see, right? Yeah. He is going to make that thing happen and deceive real people and make people believe it have no God. Is evolution, and that is what Satan wants. Back to the main subject now. I see that clip, and that's slightly I want to read. But here is Satan, right hand man, ready to carry the work of Satan, commence in heaven. That for trying and trying to amend the law of God, and the Christian world has. Sanction his efforts by adopting this child of the papacy, the Sunday institution. They have nourished it and will continue to nourish it until Protestantism shall give the hand of fellowship to the Roman power. Then there will be a law against the Sabbath of God's creation. And then it is that God will do strange work on the earth. Then you will see God make make make, make mass in this place here. You understand? Because they intend Satan intend to partner with people. To institute his day of worship. And it has already happened. It has already happened. It has already happened. Over and over and over. Romanism is now regarded, regarded by Protestants, Protestants with far greater favor than in the former years. During um, the Dark Ages, during the dark ages, people didn't want to hear about nothing about Romanism. <laughs> because they will kill you. They will exterminate you easily. They had kings dragging in the snow. They had kings kissing the dirty feet. Right? They didn't care about nobody. They taught their children to abhor popery and held that to speak. To seek harmony with Rome would be the slur to God. But how widely different are the sentiments now expressed? So now we are seeing of all the churches in this whole wide world, I never believe I would have seen the day that a general conference, what do you see again? The Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty at the General Conference, Ganyo, Ganyo Diop, D I O P Diop, right? Would, would, would seek to shake hands with 
the Catholic Church. And it's the exact same thing the um, great controversy said. Right? That they are seeking to align themselves with the Catholic Church. I don't believe Ellen White herself. I don't believe Ellen White herself would ever even believe what is happening in the Adventist Church right now. Protestants have trampled. Right? Maybe again. Protestants have tampered with and patronized papery. Right? They have made compromises and concessions which papers themselves are surprised to see and fail to understand. Men are closing their eyes to their to the real character of Romanism and its dangers to be apprehended from her supremacy. The people need to be aroused to resist the advances of the most dangerous foe to civil and religious liberty. This is a quote from Great Controversy, page 566, paragraph 1. Right? Okay? Yet, this guy is saying to us, the Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty, Mr. Dayak, is saying to us that the Catholic Church has changed. Hmm? Is this church in apostasy? Let me focus on some more positive things now. Measuring the progress of the Adventist Church, the church's mission to the world, let's measure the, 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 what has happened with the Adventist Church throughout the years. 2019, new members added to the church, 1.3 million. 2020, 800,000. 2021, 1 million. 2022, 1.3 million. 2023, 1.4 million people added to the church. And if you were to, in 2023, look at the daily amount of people that were added to our church, it's over 4,000 people per day being baptized. 4,000 people every day being baptized into this church. Okay? So the church is still growing in spite of the little issues we are having. So they will go down for our amount and a per minute amount. Okay? So there's a lot of people still coming into the church. And from where we were back in the 1800s to where we are now is by leaps and bounds. Okay? So what we have to do, even though some of our leaders seem to be trying to shake hands with the Pope, or probably they are shaking hands with the Pope, and they are getting closer to popery, which and White tells us, that is when you are backslidden, we, the church is not the buildings, alone, the church is the people. We have to get up and do what God wants us to do and continue to add to his church even though there are issues and look on the brighter side. Okay? Arise and shine. Isaiah 61 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the deep darkness the people like die up. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your eyes. In the only sermon people will ever hear is when they see you walking down the road. Alright? So this is why 
I am, I am very encouraged, even though I'm going through a very, very tough time. Very, very tough time with my wife and son. And at one time, for two weeks straight, I had to be going and bathing my mother. Right? So I had my, my, my three children, and I go up with my mother, and I sleep up there and deal with my mother because my mother had a big chair and blushed her heart attack. Right? So I had to see about my mom, and nobody else was able to do it. Right? Sister is teaching this one now, married, he absolutely running business with the wife. Next one, go to America. The next two of them, try them go and one in the States. Leave me alone. Right? And God sent a nurse to help me with my mother. And God gave me the strength. I know my mother nurse back. Almost good as gold, just the hand. Right? And she going strong. And then, and my wife, eventually my wife come out of the hospital and I'm able to handle things. And Bridget, when I tell you there are gems in this church. Even though some of the leadership may want to think and play mad, but there are gems in this church. You know, son, I have not been working since the 13th of last month. And I have not gone hungry. Hey, what are you telling you? There are people in this church that are committed to being to doing the right thing. And I, I, I approximate, I told one person, I said, I think it's about 80 20. Listen, I think it's about 20% of the people in the church doing the right thing. And 80% there's some man, a man, bacchanal, and confusion. Like anywhere you're going, any, 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 any organization is the same thing. Okay? 20% of the people that mostly do all the Understand? So I am very, very encouraged. Even though I'm, my mind is troubled when I see what is going on out there in the world, in, in the church as a whole. What you see in these year parts here, yeah? I am very encouraged. Because I just start, all of I try to go and work and make money. Yeah? My wife can't make, she calls him every minute, boy, come, come home, come home. I can't take the train crying. I can't, I can't take it. I tell you on whom. Understand? And people just have been blessing me tremendously. And when, when I expect in a hundred, again five. <laughs> right? So I just thanking God for blessing me through this difficult period. Evangelism. Page 35, the time has come when, as never before, some day Adventists are to arise and shine because their light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon them. And these are the folks I'm talking about. There are people in our church. I could tell you I was an insurance agent, somebody was my client, so I know the business. And the real people suffering more than me. And they're holding on to the money so. Holding on so. Let me tell you what. You see when the mark and the beast bus. When the mark and the beast come. You know what happened? All of them they had a. How much? 100,000 in the bank and a big savings and a big pension and all kind of thing. And they hold on so to that money. And they never help poor people. I never use the money for the mission of the church. You know what happened to them? They will be tempted heavily. And some of them may yield to that temptation to take the Maccabees, to be able to use that money. Continue to hold on to that money like with, with your two hands. <laughs> and make that money your God. <laughs> You're going up in the pit of hell. I tell you that tonight. There are many more people worse off than me. Hey, my train eating and drinking. My lights on. My internet bill paid. Hey? There are many more people worse off than me, and they have plenty, plenty, plenty people in the church. Have plenty, plenty money. They pack up their weight doing nothing. Earning interest. And they win use a, 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 a dollar to help the virgin. Hey? 2080. 2080. 
Twenty percent of the people in the church that do the work. The next eighty percent, they're on folly. You hear right, telling you? To see where the church was and where we come from and where we are now. I have plenty of confidence in the Adventist this church. Eh? Thus far the Lord has led us. Churches and companies. May 20th, 1863, 125. As of December, December 31st, 2023, churches and companies. 175,144 churches and companies worldwide. You hear? Baptized membership. May the 20th, 1863. 3,500. Okay? December 31st, 2023. Baptized membership. 22,785,195. That is like the sun of the sea. Yes. World population, 1.3. Billion in May 20, around 1873, and right now we're clocking around 8 billion. Right? So, we have a kind of not too healthy ratio of persons in the church, of post Adventist to the whole community. So, it's like one to one Adventist to 351 people. So we have plenty of witnessing to do. We have plenty of work to do. We have to bring down that number. You understand? Know, and all ties and offerings in 1863 was 8,000. Right now in 2023, well, of, 20, of 2022, is 3.822 billion US dollars. That's a lot of money. We are now in 212 countries. Right? When the SDH started, that was, was in one country, that was America. Now we're in 212 countries. Right? And the UN recognizes 235. When the church started, when the church was organized and started in 1863, it had 30 mm -hmm. employees. Now it has 352,514. And plenty of them. Yes, I thought Jesuit, but God is good. Right? Hospitals, we had none in 1863. Right now we have 233 hospitals, 1,539 clinics, 126 retirement centers, 16 orphanages worldwide. Right? When it just started, we had no publishing houses. Now we have 53 print publishing houses and we publish in 256 languages media centers we have 19 media centers okay food industries we have 23 food industries okay adventist world radio studios none in 1863 Right now we have 2,005 supported, affiliated radio ministries worldwide. So the church is growing in spite of the negative situations right? that has been going on. The church is growing. Moving on now, changing again now to the Conrad Vines you. Many of you know that Conrad Vine was banned from speaking in his own religious liberty conference in Bering Springs last Sabbath. The Michigan conference not only banned Vine from speaking at the, this event that the church organized, they banned the village church from playing any online sermon of his in the sanctuary. Hey, so that was an edict. Let's imagine that, eh? The Adventist Church is doing edicts now. According to Fulcrum. The sermon that Vine had prepared for the Religious Liberty Seminar 
is titled Silent Men. Banned by the Michigan Conference, he was not allowed to speak. That sermon will now be given on Sabbath, the October the 5th at the Sozo Camp Meeting in Denton. Praise the Lord. So some people have come to their senses with regard to Dr. Pastor Vine. It should be very interesting. Well, over a million Seventh-day Adventists will be watching this development. So, then the people in Denton are saying, Pastor Vine, come through. Be listening to you. So this is what is happening. Additionally, as I tell you, people are trying to bring this church to be somewhat like um, the Catholic Church. There is a group going about, um, I can't even remember what they call itself now. Um, yes, in AdventistaDay.org, there is an um, SDA kinship post retreat for queer Adventists in Denmark. You're here? So, this is why I'm asking the question tonight Is the church in apostasy? As the kinship hosts a retreat for queer Adventists in Denmark. Now, some time ago, I did a live, uh, I can't remember, a live uh, video concerning um, a petition that they had put up. A lot of big people in the church signed it to affirm um, LBGT people. Right? So this is what is happening within our church. What does the Bible say about the LBG2QIA plus people? We believe that the Bible does not condemn same gender orientation, nor does it address transgender identity. Many seminary Adventist Christians from lay people to seminary professors have studied the biblical text within the same gender sexuality acts and have concluded that the bible does not say it is doesn't say is as important as what it does say what the saying is what the bible doesn't say is as important as what the bible does say so there that that is what the group is saying that they they um they are contending that the the bible doesn't say anything um against the lbgtq xyz the alphabet group and i am in total disagreement with that and a lot of other people are in total disagreement with that because the bible clearly states mankind should not live with mankind and mankind should not live with womankind they also state um man should not go with animal and one should go with animal and if that happens the animal should be killed okay so this is the state of affairs in our church today, my friends. Hey, but when you look on the brighter side, where we are seeing that some people are now opening their eyes and resisting conferences who are giving them pressure. I understand the people in this conference, in this Denton conference, any conference in that area there is putting them under pressure to refuse to, 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 to continue the ban against Pastor Vine, which is wrong. Pastor Vine didn't say anything wrong. What Pastor Vine said is, if, and I did a video there, but there was some audio, some gaps in the audio, so I didn't publish it. He said, if the conference goes against our religious liberty, we should set up a parachute. He never said go and set up a parachute and send on the tide somewhere else. He never said that. Eh? So people are just making up excuses and wanted to go against Brother Vine for no reason. Right? He pointed out the wrong that the church did during COVID-19 and allow a lot of people to take the injection by saying that yes, it's new start plus injection. Right? So they added on an injection date. And the leadership of the church 
did not come back and say no 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 what we did there that was wrong you know because the whole wide world realized that the whole vaccine situation and that whole situation and that pandemic there was 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 it was off something was wrong right and they never apologized for what they did to people right and a lot of people got sick by trusting what the church was telling them to do and, and a lot of people so we took the vaccine like me i took the vaccine and them to me because as i told you all before Paul was bitten by, by venomous viper and that numb to him. Right? So I was, in, was of all confident, like taking the vaccine. And if I did, when I go and see my father earlier, I'll go and take my rest. And the next thing I know, I'll be in judgment and I'll see my Lord God. Or nothing will happen to me. And no harm didn't come on to me. You understand? So I wasn't afraid of no vaccine or nothing like that. I took it as a precaution because I just had children and so on. I didn't want to infect them or not live to see them grow. And guide them on the right way. You understand? So, a lot of people were affected negatively by it, and they blame the conference and held the conference responsible. Certain relationships even ended because people was not in, con in, in, in alignment with thought on the same issue, and all of that land back again in the conference lap. And they never came and apologized. Up to now, they have not apologized. Right, and one commentator online says over a thousand days now, a thousand and sixty eight days or something like that, that they have not apologized to the people of the Adventist Church. And is that? So this is the state of affairs. Do I have any more text to read? This is the state of affairs. Right? I think we reach here already. Right. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs for, of Jesus. And when I saw, I wondered with great amazement. Do not forget, my friends, that we cannot, we cannot, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. This is what I'll leave you with tonight, my friends. So all of those, Learned conference men, the director of public affairs and religious liberty of the general conference, Ganyop Diop. Right? All of these people who are stretching their hands over to Rome, may God have mercy upon their souls for their education and their PhDs and their high positions have turned them to fools. I hope they repent and they recant from that action and thought pattern, right? And come back to the change of message and continue to preach the change of message because the change of message also includes Jesus, right? I hope you turn around from that type of behavior. Let me go and put my baby girl to bed. Happy Sabbath one and all. Over and out for now. Remember the truth.